just got the camera on. Feel free to move up closer if you want to be able to see the slides that Megan has. She's got a PowerPoint presentation, which goes along with everything she's going to be talking about. She's a dietitian. It's a lot of detailed uh, scientific stuff, is what I'm guessing, right? So, <laughs> so you're going to want to take a look at this if you can. And as I mentioned, I'm recording this video, so if you want to get copies, and you want to actually get copies, you can watch them ongoing and definitely on our YouTube channel, aplantbaseddiet.org. I will hopefully have them up within the next week, every single speaker here today, so you can find out about um, more information if you missed anything here in the talk. And um, it will really help you out, and you may want to pass some things along to others as well. And by the way, we, we work with other companies, other organizations, that are in this movement, and we happen to have on our YouTube channel the full-length movie, if you haven't seen it, Plant Pure Nation, anybody heard of that? Plant Pure Nation with Nelson Campbell, Dr. Keith Holman Campbell, yeah. That movie is actually on our YouTube channel, the full-length movie, you can watch it whenever you want, so that's another reason to go to our YouTube channel. And we try to put as much information as possible from as many sources as possible as a, as a resource to you. And let's see, what else can I tell you? Oh, we are doing festivals up and down the East Coast. This is not the only one we do. This just happens to be the first veg fest in this area, specifically in this park. And we intend to make this an annual event. We intend to have additional veg fests. So that's what we're doing. And uh, we're glad you're here. We're glad that this movement's gaining strength. And we also want to remember to tell you guys to please invite your non-plant-based, non-vegan friends as well because we're really doing this because we want to let people know how fun it is. We want to let people know how delicious the food is, like with the cooking demonstrations, the food you can buy, right? And that's all people, I mean, really all the people care about is if the food tastes good, right? I mean, they don't care where it's from as long as it tastes good and, and they have a fun time outdoors, they learn some new information, they hear some live music, watch some cooking demonstrations, right? do some shopping. That's what we're about. So, let's see, right now it's, 1007, I'm going to introduce Megan Jardine from Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, one of our sponsors here today, PCRM. They're the leading organization, vegan medical organization, I'd say probably anywhere. They're based out of Washington, D.C. area. Actually, I think in Northwest Washington, D.C. with Dr. Neil Barnard is the founder of that organization. He's been at some of our events as well. He was just at, recently at, at Fairfax Veg Fest and gave a talk, so if you want to hear his talk, go on our YouTube channel, look under the playlist for Fairfax Veg Fest. But we have Megan, who is a nutritionist, and so she's going to talk specifically about nutrition, plant-based eating, right, all that, and she's got a really interesting talk, so take it away, Megan. Three weeks 
uh, menus, recipes, shopping lists. Uh, it's all vegan. It's all nutritionally adequate. Uh, planned by registered dietitians like me. And with delicious recipes that are easy to prepare, with ingredients that are affordable, uh, that you can get at any grocery store. Uh, we also um, uh, have a Food for Life program, and Beth Pereira is here. She's a Food for Life instructor. We certify Food for Life instructors. Uh, instructors come to, they apply, and they come to Washington, D.C. to be trained in um, how to prepare recipes, how to do a, a really great food presentation. Um, and uh, so you can learn more about that. Um, Beth teaches classes all the time. And very close, close area, close uh, around here. Somerset County, Maine. Okay, in Maine. Well, I mean, I'm here from Maine, too. So. Okay, so, and I think we do have uh, Cece Chen, who is a Food for Life instructor. She'll be speaking today as well as Beth. Beth will be speaking after me. So we also have, I have a lot of materials here. You're welcome to um, come up and uh, get our vegetarian starter kit. If you go to our website, we also have lots of recipes. Um, we also have lots of resources for, you know, anyone can go vegan. It's appropriate for all stages of the life cycle, including pregnant women, including children, um, athletes. Um, we have resources for healthcare professionals. We do uh, continuing education for healthcare care professionals. That's all evidence-based. So physicians, uh, nurses, and dietitians can go to our website, um, uh, Nutrition CME, and get free continuing education hours. And we have books on all different concerns, um, brain health, cancer, prevention, diabetes, reversing diabetes. Um, and then we also promote healthy nutrition policy because we want policies in our country to be reflective of research that's done in nutrition, not industry interests, which is, um, you know, the nutrition guidelines, so, or the dietary guidelines for Americans. And because of the work that we've done, they have a healthy vegetarian uh, eating pattern on their current guidelines. And there's options for vegan. Um, however, the next dietary guidelines is going to be a little more prominent if we do our work right. So we've also influenced school lunches. And um, uh, we have a hospital program. Uh, hospitals can get certified to be plant-based so that when patients go into the hospital, they get healthy plant-based options. We also do a lot in ethical science, reducing the use of animals in research. Not only medical research, but in uh, animal uh, testing for cosmetics and things like that, and medical education. Well, I could go on and on about all the things we do, um, but I'm going to talk more about my, uh, the eight top reasons to go vegan. And this is uh, Dr. Neil Barnard. He's an amazing human being. He's the founder of our um, uh, the Physicians Committee, and his goal is to create a healthier world um, based on nutrition and also that's kinder to animals. So what is plant-based nutrition? Or, you know, sometimes we say plant-based, sometimes we say vegan, but vegan doesn't always mean it's healthy. It just means it doesn't have any animal products. But when we work with people for health reasons, we recommend they eat, get most of their food from plants. That's whole grains, beans, um, or legumes, uh, nuts and seeds, and fruits and vegetables. And it's high in fiber and all kinds of nutrients like vitamins and minerals and phytochemicals. And it's low in saturated fat and cholesterol. It's low in heavy metals and um, pesticides and antibiotics, uh, which you can be exposed to with animal products. So I'm going to start with my top first reason, and um, I used to be overweight, and so my top reason is it's easier to um, maintain my body weight, and vegans are actually thinner, and studies show that. I don't know why this is for. Can you guys even see my slides? You can? Okay. All right, because maybe it doesn't matter. Okay, so two out of three Americans are overweight or obese. And that's a problem because that leads to a lot of diseases. Um, and we know that meat and dairy, there are studies that show that people who eat more meat and more dairy have more 
uh, abdominal obesity. They actually store more fat around their belly area. So going plant-based is going to help you not only lose weight, but lose weight where it counts. So uh, we know that obesity is related to a lot of um, you know, problems, premature death, uh, diabetes, heart disease, uh, gastrointestinal diseases, the list goes on. And like I said, being overweight or having obesity is related to meat consumption. And, you know, in 1900, we consumed about um, 120, less than 124 pounds of meat per year. And now we consume over 200 pounds of meat per year. And so it's increased significantly, partly because of subsidies, partly because it's uh, less expensive and uh, people have, do have more wealth. Um, most of this has come from chicken. We consume about 20, uh, about a million chickens every hour in our country. That's 24 million chickens a day. Cheese is also another problem. Cheese is very high in calories. It's high in fat. Um, in the 1900s, we consumed about three pounds of cheese per year. Uh, now the average American consumes over 37 pounds of cheese. And I'm not eating any. Um, I know some of you who are sitting here are probably already planning. That has really driven obesity as well. And a lot of people think, oh, well, we're overweight because we, you know, we consume so much sugar. Well, you know, sugar's not a health food. But sugar consumption, if you can see my slide, has been fairly flat since the 1970s. In fact, it's gone down since the year 2000 because people are drinking bottled water instead of, um, you know, Cokes and, and uh, sodas and things like that. But cheese consumption has gone up exponentially. And if you look, if you can see this slide, obesity actually correlates more with cheese consumption than sugar consumption. And cheese is high in fat. Fat is higher in calories. So one gram of fat has nine calories. One gram of carbohydrate, which sugar is a carbohydrate. Sugar is not a, not a health food. I'm not promoting sugar, but carbohydrates have four grams, um, four calories per gram. And a plant-based diet is high in carbohydrate, but it's high in unrefined carbohydrates like whole grains, beans, uh, fruits and vegetables. So just one, one ounce of cheese is 110 calories. To get 110 calories from sugar, you'd have to consume like seven teaspoons of sugar. Or if you wanted to have broccoli instead, you could have three and a half cups. So this is one reason why eating a plant-based diet is so helpful for losing weight. Because you can eat more food, get really full, and, but you're actually eating less calories. And um, so this slide kind of shows you what 500 calories look like. So um, 500 calories of, of olive oil. Olive oil is very high in calories. Uh, it's a plant food, but uh, you want to really minimize that as much as possible. But cheese and meat and eggs is going to fill your stomach at a very small amount compared to plant-based foods like um, whole grains, beans, uh, fruits, and vegetables. So, um, and uh, a plant-based diet or a vegan diet has been shown to be very effective for people who lose weight. In fact, people I know who switch to this way of eating lose weight and they're able to keep it off because they're not counting calories. They're eating healthy and they're not depriving themselves. So more on that later. But reason number two, all right. The second, um, my second favorite reason is that I'm, I'm hoping to live longer. Um, you know, uh, there's lots of studies showing that people following a vegan diet um, live longer in California. Um, a vegetarian man lives um, almost 10 years longer than a non-vegetarian. And that's a, that's a huge difference. And these are not years of um, uh, being debilitated in a nursing home. Um, seven, these studies come from the Seventh-day Adventists. And they, uh, there's actually more and more of them that are following a vegan eating pattern. And that is turning out to uh, provide us with even more data on uh, longevity um, by eliminating animal products. So um, 
That is a really good reason. There's also the blue zones. Uh, Loma Linda, California, where um, there are a lot of uh, people who are Seventh-day Adventists live, uh, is a blue zone. And some people say, well, all these blue zones, all these pe places in the world where people live to be longer, uh, older, like 90 to 100, who are healthy and active, it's their genes. But we know from the Dutch uh, twin study that it's not genetics, it's lifestyle. Genetics is only about 20%. The other 80% is lifestyle. So um, in addition, well, the Okinawa diet is less than 5% um, calories from animal products. So it's basically a plant-based diet. It's also very high in carbohydrate, 85% of the calories from the carbohydrate. And so many people think, well, carbohydrates are bad, and there's a lot of low-carb diets out there, but actually we're finding that, um, you know, the research does not reflect that. If you actually look at the studies, population studies, people who live longer are actually eating more of a plant-based diet, and uh, high-carb, uh, low in animal products. So there's other things people should do to be healthy. It's not just eating plant-based, but being physically active, reducing your stress, sleeping well, um, have, having good relationships and good social support. So uh, if you ever read the Blue Zones book, you will, uh, it's, got, it's got some really good tips for a healthy lifestyle. So reason number three, so first is uh, uh, eating plant, a plant-based diet is going to make you thinner, it's going to help you live longer, it's going to, number three, prevent and treat disease. And the major diseases in our country are diabetes, well, probably heart disease and cancer come first, but I'm a diabetes educator, so I'm going to say that first, but because two out of three people will develop diabetes in their lifetime in our country. And um, over 100 million people have either diabetes or pre-diabetes right now. And so it's a huge uh, health problem. So we know that uh, a plant-based diet or a vegan eating pattern is the only eating pattern that is reversed atherosclerotic plaques or um, you know those plaques that cause heart disease in the coronary arteries. So, um, and uh, Dean Ordish has shown that, uh, Caldwell, Esselstyn, and they have done studies that have been published in um, the Journal of uh, the American Medical Association. So to do that, you eat mostly plants, whole grains, beans, fruits, vegetables, small amounts of nuts and seeds, reduce the amount of oil or minimize added oils, and eliminate animal products, eliminating saturated fat and trans fats, um, and also take a B12 supplement. So anyone following a vegan diet should take a B12 supplement. So diabetes has also been shown with the Adventist Health Studies that um, it's much lower in the vegan population, like 50% lower. And this is after adjusting for body weight. So we know that eating plant-based makes you thinner, but um, that and, and being thinner actually protects you from diabetes, but when you control for body weight, there's still a 50% reduction in risk for diabetes, which is huge. And we've also done studies at the Physicians Committee, and if you can see that, you look at A1C, which is a measure, of, or hemoglobin A1C, which is a measure of diabetes control. Uh, if, um, so that's what we measured in the study. And we compared a uh, vegan, uh, low-fat vegan diet to a more traditional approach for managing diabetes. And um, the people following the vegan diet lost more weight. They had better glucose control, and they also had a reduction in their cholesterol, which is significant, significantly lower um, than the control group. And I know people who have reversed their diabetes with a plant-based diet. This is Mark Ramirez. He was right guard with the University of Michigan. And um, so he was a healthy college student, um, played football, but ate the standard American diet. And um, in 2002, he was diagnosed with diabetes. Now, he was not surprised that he has um, had diabetes because uh, he comes from a family of eight, and all of his brothers and sisters have diabetes, 
Uh, his, his mother died prematurely of diabetes, complications of diabetes. He has a brother who died prematurely of um, complications of diabetes. So he did what he was supposed to do. He went on a, you know, a portion control diet and he took his medicines. And by 2011, he was um, on three medications for diabetes, including insulin. And uh, his diabetes was still out of control. And his doctor wanted to put him on insulin. And so he's, his wife said, why don't we try this plant-based diet? So they found Dr. Neil Barnard's book on reversing diabetes. And he started eating plant-based. And um, he immediately started to lose weight. He immediately um, had low blood sugars. He had to reduce his medications. And now he, um, now he is diabetes free. He has a normal A1C, normal um, glucose levels. He's uh, maintained his weight loss for eight years. So the chance that someone actually loses weight and keeps it off is very low in traditional weight loss programs. And as um, some of you may know, people who've tried to lose weight or maybe you've had trouble with controlling your weight yourself, that it's uh, very difficult to do it by reducing calories or portion control. On a plant-based diet, you get to eat, is you get to satisfy yourself with plant-based foods and um, lose weight naturally. So um, uh, there's more success stories on that. So I'm gonna move on to my fourth reason, which is it's sustainable. Now, I'm not an expert on environmental nutrition or um, the environment, but I do know that deforestation in the Amazon, the number one cause is um, the cattle ranching. Um, uh, animal agriculture also utilizes a lot of water. It is destroying our topsoil. Um, it causes pollution. Uh, the manure that, uh, that gets into the environment uh, gets into our groundwater um, and our surface water. It's, uh, a lot of the animals are fed antibiotics to help them grow more quickly. And actually only 25% uh, of antibiotics are absorbed into the animal. The other 75% gets into the manure which gets into the ground, you know, gets into the environment. And that's how we are exposed and that's really contributes to antibiotic resistant strains of bacteria. So a vegan diet uses significantly less land to produce. Um, one sixth of an acre a year, 300 gallons a year of water compared to the standard American diet, which is over three acres of land and 1,600 gallons of water a day. So, um, if you're concerned about the environment and you drive a car to, uh, you know, to reduce your emissions, uh, you significantly make a change by um, eating a vegan diet. So reason number five, and this is personal to me, is it's, um, you know, um, we produce so much more meat, um, and dairy, and uh, it's a huge industry, and animals have, have become commodities, and that's come at a huge cost. And so if any of you have had companion animals, uh, you know that they can give and receive love, and they have feelings, and they, uh, they are happy, they have joy, they have fear and anxiety. I'm uh, traveling with um, Daisy, who's sitting back there in the audience. And uh, she, we went to a hotel yesterday to, to come here and she, you could tell she was very anxious because she's never been in a hotel or an elevator before. So, um, so you know that if you um, um, have had companion animals. And so there's no difference between their feelings and feelings of other species, such as the ones that uh, Americans eat, or we eat pigs or um, cows. So number six, uh, going vegetarian or going vegan can make you smarter. Now this was a study done in uh, the United Kingdom. They asked a group of people um, who were, uh, there were uh, um, several hundred following a, a, a 
vegetarian diet compared to a non-vegetarian diet, and the difference in IQ was about 10 points, and that's pretty significant. Um, so it could make you smarter. I don't know if it's done that for me, but um, you don't have to be a genius. There are a lot of geniuses that we know of who were vegetarian. Uh, Albert Einstein promoted a vegetarian diet. If you were here today, he probably, because of the way animals are raised, he would probably promote a vegan diet, I would assert. So number seven, um, a, a plant-based diet or a vegan diet has the highest diet quality. Now there are validated tools to measure diet quality. Um, one of them is the Alternative Healthy Eating Index. And this has been used in huge studies for many years and demonstrated that uh, low scores Low scores are associated with cardiovascular mortality, cancer mortality, diabetes mortality, and uh, all-cause mortality. And this study right here shows different eating patterns, if you can't see it, but the highest score goes to the Dean Ornish uh, eating pattern, which is a plant-based eating pattern, and the lowest score goes to Dr. Atkins diet, which is a low-carbohydrate diet. All low carbohydrates diets have a low diet quality score. So if you know, I'm sure you know people, I do swear by their low carbohydrate diets, they are eating a low diet quality um, diet and it will catch up with them and increase their risk of disease. The big ones that I spoke about earlier. Also, the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, which is the premier organization for nutrition professionals, I am a member, they have a position statement and they state that vegan diets are uh, helpful and nutritionally adequate, so you can get all the nutrition you need from a plant-based eating pattern, and they are also uh, effective in preventing and treating diseases like diabetes and heart disease. So, so many people will say, well, where do you get your protein? You know, that you're supposed to eat meat to get protein. Well, that's not true. Um, if you've seen a horse, uh, they have big, beautiful muscles. Um, do they eat meat? No, they don't. They eat grass and oats. Uh, now, you don't have to eat grass and oats, but you can eat legumes, and you can eat whole grains, and you can eat vegetables, and you, as long as you're eating a whole foods, plant-based diet, you will get all the food you need. Um, you will get calcium, um, and I have some handouts here on nutritional adequacy, so if you are interested, you can take those, and um, you know, just if you have a concern about getting all the nutrients you need, you do need to take a, a, a supplemental B12. That is the only... Now, animals don't make B12. B12 is made by a single-cell organism. It's in the soil. Um, you know, animals get it from eating grass. They're getting a little dirt, you know, and that's B12. So I don't, right? Just take a supplement. Don't eat dirt. Number eight, it's delicious. So this is what really, you know, people say, I could never give up meat. I could never give up cheese, you know. I need that flavor. I need that food. And, and the truth is, I eat the most delicious food. I, I love to cook. I'm a dietitian. I, I cook as a young person when I, you know, I started cooking, you know, with baking. And then I started cooking, and I love cooking. And so I am um, always finding delicious recipes to prepare. And I have people over, I have dinner parties, and people love my food. People always want to come and eat my food. So um, there's all kinds of things you can eat. Breakfast can be healthy with oatmeal, or you can make a smoothie with uh, frozen fruit. Uh, add some kale, add some berries. Uh, you can have pancakes, you can have scrambled tofu. Um, my son loves that. I have a 15-year-old son, and he eats bean burritos for breakfast. It keeps him going all morning. Um, at school, and uh, I make a lot of soups and stews, um, lentil loaf. If you're if you're in a hurry, you can always there's you can even eat fast food. You can go to Taco Bell and get a bean burrito. Tell them to hold the cheese. You can go to Subway and get a veggie sandwich. Tell them to hold the cheese. Um, there's it's limitless what you can eat. You can eat pasta. 
Um, you can make vegan lasagna that's delicious. You can use nuts and tofu to make a ricotta. Um, there's all kinds of things. So in review, um, the eight top reasons to go vegan is number one, you're gonna uh, be healthier. Um, you're gonna achieve a healthy body weight. Uh, you might live longer. Um, it can help you prevent disease, uh, particularly uh, diabetes, heart disease, and cancer. Um, it's more sustainable, it's more humane. It promotes intelligence. Um, it has a high diet quality. You're gonna get plenty of nutrition. You're gonna get more nutrition. Oh, and the studies we've done too, we measured this diet quality using that alternative healthy eating index. And anyone doing our vegan diets, their score increases. If they go on one of the control diets, usually the score doesn't even change. Um, it's delicious. And um, anyway, um, I'm going to be here. Um, I know I ended early, but I'll be here if you have any nutrition questions. Um, I've been doing this a long time. I spend a lot of my time reading the research. I write articles. I do presentations at conferences to uh, diabetes educators mostly is my target to nurses and dietitians and pharmacists about plant-based diet specifically for diabetes and um, so if you have any health-related questions, I'd be happy to answer them. I can't give, I can't give medical advice or specific advice, but I, I, I can sure try to answer any of your questions. So thank you so much. Hey, does anybody have any questions? I've got the microphone here. I can pass it around. If anybody has questions for Megan, just raise your hand. Okay, we got one over here. alternatives. I think they are great for people who want to transition. Um, my husband loves the Beyond Meat uh, burger and sausage, and so we do use those. Uh, but it's a processed food, um, so uh, but it's still plant-based. And I will tell you, when, he, when I cook a, one of those burgers for him, I usually get like a Boca vegan burger or uh, one of the lesser burgers that, because it's like 260 calories, so uh, it's, it has a lot of fat in it. Um, it. You know, it depends on the person. If you can talk, my husband, it, you know, he's, he's very thin. He's, his BMI is like 19, which is almost too thin. And he exercises a lot, so he can handle a lot of calories. Um, not that calories are important, but when you go into having more processed foods and a plant-based diet, you're going to be getting more calories. Um, so it just depends, you know. I think they're good for people who can can have them, and uh, I know it, it, my husband really likes them. So and he's eating them. He does not want to eat meat. Um, it's more of a humane issue for him as well. Right. Do we have any other questions? More questions? Because this is a great opportunity. Anybody has any questions about, uh, uh, your, I guess, Megan, you're more from a health perspective, would you say? You and health? Uh, well, I'm a dietitian. Um, what, so, what, 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 were you, what were you thinking about? I guess just in general, I mean, that was a good question about the transition products, I guess is what I'd call them, of yes. Beyond Beef and Yeah, all of those are. Oh, that has got a question. What? One thing I would say about these transition products is they are great because, you know, we all go to barbecues, we all go to things like that where everybody's eating meat and, you, you know, you want to be able to join in, right? But there's, you can make your own, I, I make my own burgers a lot with black beans and sweet potatoes and or lentils and kale and there's so many recipes out there. We have lots of recipes on our website that are easy to prepare. I freeze them, I put them in the freezer so, you know, the, Really, the front end is a lot of work, but if you put them in the freezer, you take them out, throw them on the grill, and you're ready to go. And um, next to my husband's uh, Beyond Meat Burger. <laughs> ready? Okay, so you're a diabetes educator. 
So what do you tell your patients who have had drummed into their head that diabetes is all about the sugar, that sugar causes diabetes? What do you tell them? Well, that's really hard because even healthcare professionals believe that uh, carbohydrates and sugars cause diabetes. And even the new guidelines are all about low carb. Um, and if you look at the, if you increase carbohydrate and you reduce fat, it significantly improves insulin resist, uh, resistance. So we all have muscle cells and inside our cells um, can be fat and fat, especially from a standard American diet. If you go to a, a vegan diet or a low-fat vegan diet, the fat starts to diminish in your cells. And that significantly improves insulin resistance because your, your cells are saying, I don't need glucose, I have all this fat. But, um, and so people's glucose goes up. If you reduce the fat, the cells will be able to take that glucose. You can put people on a rice diet, just white rice and their glucose will improve. Now, I'm not saying you should do that because, you know, that's not exactly the healthiest way of doing it. Um, but it's very hard to, I find it very hard to convince people, even diabetes educators. And so that's why I'm out there going to the conferences, doing these, uh, it, you know, the presentations I do are a little more scientific because, um, you know, they want to see the studies, they want to see the, uh, the actual process that, um, you know, a plant-based diet improves insulin, the, the working of the insulin is... Now, for type 1 diabetes, though, they still need to take insulin, but what we found is, and there's not many studies on this, it's more like uh, experimental or anecdotal, their glucose, their need for insulin decreases on a plant-based diet significantly. And insulin's very expensive. And if you, if you want to come up and talk to me, uh, you can do that too. So, thank yeah. you so much. Oh, one more uh, question. Another question here. Uh, it's part comments, and I also have a question. Have you done any research or reading regarding genetically modified food and also pesticides? The reason I ask is because it was recently mentioned in the news a few weeks ago that the Impossible Burger tested positive for 11 times higher of, I forget how to pronounce it, glycophate? Yes, the, the pesticide that's in Roundup. Um, and now, Impossible Burger also announced they're going to be using genetically modified soy in addition to the pesticide. Um, personally, I eat all organic. I was wondering if you've done any research regarding organic versus non-organic food and also regarding um, pesticides. Oh, thank you. That's such a great question. I wish I could answer that. Um, I am so sad to hear that about the Impossible Burger. We have not done research on um, GMO or um, pesticides. I know that products that have been genetically modified, they're modified so that they can tolerate more pesticides, um, like, they, like well, the Roundup. Um, the chemical in Roundup. So, um, I personally avoid those products. I try to eat organic. But, I will say this. If you go plant-based and you're eating a whole foods plant-based diet, you're not eating a lot of foods that are um, uh, processed, you're still going to reduce your exposure to pesticides because these animals are eating... Um, soy, and they're, they're eating the GMO soy. They're eating um, uh, grains that have been exposed to uh, fertilizer, not, not only fertilizers, but the pesticides. And so, and the pesticides store in the muscle, and they don't, it doesn't go, necessarily go away. So you're going to be exposed to a lot more pesticides if you eat an animal-based uh, diet than if you eat a plant-based diet that uh, includes whole foods. I have one thing to add that might help. Um, across the board, absolutely, if you have access to and can afford organic plant-based foods, that's the ideal. That is the ideal. But also, all these studies that have been done on disease reversal, whether it's diabetes, different cancers, 
heart disease. We're not done with solely organic food. So people who are eating whole foods, plant-based, low-fat, no oil, we're still able to reduce or reverse their disease with just conventional plant-based food. So better to eat plant-based, no matter the source, than to continue eating animal products. Does anyone else have any questions, comments? I guess this is a great opportunity. Just raise your hand. I have something I want to say, actually. I mentioned earlier that I'm, I and our organization, Plant-Based Diet, got all of you sponsoring this event, who's helping to organize it, is working with Green Fair Organic Cafe. I know, Megan, you mentioned the 21-day jumpstart to PCRM. Both myself and my wife, Denise, who's over at the info tent, are going to be doing that starting on the 13th, which I think is a Tuesday, like that? Yeah, at Green Fair Organic Cafe, so I want to get my blood work drawn. I'm going to have all their food. They're actually... Green Fair Organic Cafe is a you know, fully whole food plant-based, fully organic restaurant. They're going to provide all of our meals for the 21 days. We only have to cook, okay? And we'll have the, the top quality stuff. And I'm going to record all this and make videos on our YouTube channel about the process, so you'll be able to see how it goes. So just go, you know, another reason to go to our YouTube channel, a plantbaseddiet.org. Just type that in when you go to YouTube. And is there anything I should look out for when I do this program? Um, well, if you're getting your food from Green Fair, you're going to be eating a lot of really delicious food. Um, well, you may become more regular. <laughs> um, uh, I think you're going to feel great. You're going to have more energy. One of the things my husband noticed, because he was really mad when I told him I was going vegan, because I do all the cooking. And, um, th this was many years ago. This, it's been almost 13 years. And uh, one thing he noticed is that he sleeps so much better. And um, a lot of things just improve. Um, you may even, well, you've been eating mostly plant-based anyway, yeah, but, I mean, but you're going to be more healthier plant-based. Yeah, I'm just, I think it'll be fun to go through it, because I think that even if I can't benefit as much as the average person can, we're going to document it, like I said, so people will be able to see what that is. And I have a feeling I may, even though I am a very strict eater, I have a feeling I'll probably see some improvements in the blood work, and I'll know that because of, of what we're doing with the testing before and afterwards. And that's also, that movie I mentioned, Plant Care Nation, they, they show that, they have a little bit different program, but they have a, they show that in the movie as well, how that works and how people actually get affected by it. I'm sure you guys see that all the time at PCRM, because that's, that's one of the main things that you do. Yeah, that's great. Good luck. I look, I look forward to seeing how uh, that works out for you. All right, any last minute questions? Uh, we have a, our next talk doesn't begin until 11 o'clock. According to my watch, we have a little bit of time. So if you have any questions, you can either ask them right here, right now, last minute, or you can just see, see Megan when she walks off the stage, or she'll probably be around for a little while. And uh, aside of that, we will see you at 11 o'clock for our next talk. So you can hang around here or see you at 11 o'clock. Okay, I also have some handouts here. You're welcome to come up here. Uh, I have a few books uh, if anybody uh, is interested in uh, reading a book. I don't have very many, but there's not a huge crowd here, so thank you.